Hello everyone, Bobbin here, and you are watching my FTB Infinity Evolve Skyblock Let's Play series. Today we're going to kill some dragons. The project you see in front of me we'll actually talk about next episode. I just thought I'd put it out there as a teaser. That's something that's being worked on. But coming through here, I need to show you how I'm going to be doing some of the grinding that's necessary for getting these things, Awakened Cores. I have to craft a number of awakened cores for the purpose of making the energy cell here. Also, probably today I'll upgrade my weaver and chest plate to get the draconic chest plate, since that is it. I'll probably be upgrading all of this gear, and although I've already upgraded my sword, I'll probably be upgrading some of the other tools as well. So I'm going to need lots of awakened cores, and to do that I'm going to need awakened draconium. Awakened Draconium is produced in the end from a ritual that involves the Dragon Heart that I got before. And you can make up to four blocks of it at a time, which is what I'm about to do here. So let's head to the end. Oh, where is that platform? It's way over here. I've been building some uh, fake terrain in the end, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So what you have to do for this particular ritual is we need to take and place some TNT. And I'll put it here in the pocket in the middle of this obsidian. And I'm going to put a lever next to it so I can activate it. I need to make sure that I have taken off my greater ring of magnetization because I don't want to accidentally pick up any items. Now, to, to start with, we're going to throw down the heart. And this is going to, a number of things are going to happen pretty quickly here once I set this off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the lever to activate the TNT. The heart's going to get blown up, except it's going to survive the explosion and it's going to be activated. When that happens, I'm going to throw down 16 draconic cores. Four for each block that I want to convert into awakened draconium. And the heart is going to eat those. And as soon as it does, I'm going to plop down the charged draconium blocks. And I'm going to do it quickly. It doesn't matter where I place them as long as it's close by. And I will just place them quickly. So here we go. So there's the heart. And there went the cores. And it's going to gather things up. So now I can place my charged draconium blocks and it's going to do its little light show for a bit. You can see it a little better if I changed angle here. There we go. Okay, so it blew up, destroyed some end stone, and it converted my blocks to awakened draconium blocks. Let's take this back to the overworld and do something exciting with it. Alright, so back in the overworld, let's see if I can head the right direction here. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I'm going to go ahead, and I have to do this every time I go to the end. I'm going to remove my heart canisters and put them back in, and I'll have to eat some food as, as I regenerate my health. It, for some reason, takes you down to where you don't have any of the extra hearts, and you got to regenerate that. Okay, so I'm actually going to pull the cores out of here. And one of them I'm going to go and soak in basically four blocks of draconium. And I've already got the draconium melted down there. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Just like that. And start that because that's going to take a while. Meanwhile, let's come back over here and look at the recipe for the draconic chest plate. which is for an achievement. Uh, we need two cores, which we've got, and we need uh, a draconic energy core, which we also have, sort of. It's being produced over there in the smeltery right now. That's made by pouring all that draconium onto an awakened core. We're going to need two blocks of pure mana, which I have made in advance, 
and two awakened draconium blocks. We've got four in my inventory right now. And then the weaver and chest plate that I'm wearing now and this flux crystal block. The flux crystal block is made from nine flux crystals and the flux crystals come from soaking a diamond in redstone. So let me get that started. I do have the recipe set up in here. So I will just tell that to create a flux crystal block. And because it involves melting down that redstone and all that stuff on demand, it, it will take just a little bit to make that. So while that's going, let me arrange these things in their desired pattern. What was that? Pure mana. And then I guess I'll have to take off my armor and put it in the middle. Let's see how this is progressing over here. It is still pouring draconium. It takes forever to do that. It just finished. Um, contains draconic energy core, so we made it. And that goes here. And flux crystal block still hasn't finished. Let's see how that's coming along over here. It's still waiting on three of them. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to kill the Ender Dragon. And I'm going to kill him twice. And I'm going to show a difference in how you can spawn him. Because there's a good way and there's an unpleasant way. <clears throat> the unpleasant way will be what you have to use if you have not done some of the work that I've done in advance, by the way. Just letting you know. Okay. Draconic chest plate. So as soon as I get this, I should get an achievement. Hopefully I don't get a crash. I did not. So let's put that on. My armor doesn't quite match anymore. But it's um, it's still nice. And that is, it should be charged up immediately because it should have gone from my... Uh, Weaver and Flux capacitor I'm carrying in my inventory, which is a big battery that holds 80 million RF. That is recharging over here. So, let me put the achievement down on the wall. How come it has a wrench? Uh, I guess it's maybe a wrench from Draconic Evolution. Crystal Binder. Yes, a little weird that, that it would use the tool instead of the actual chest plate that you made, but I guess that works. Now, one of the things that um, we're going to be using here, let's talk about this. I'm going to need, for the next ritual that's going to resurrect the dragon, I'm going to need a block of four blocks of diamond, four glowstone, 12 uh, quartz blocks, four charged draconium, and a resurrection stone. Now the reason that you do this, there are also um, four obsidian needed, but I've already got it in place because it never gets destroyed. So once you've placed the obsidian, it will just stay there indefinitely. The reason you do this is because you want to get more dragon hearts. Because every dragon heart will awaken four blocks of draconium, and we need lots of blocks of awakened draconium. But to get more dragon hearts, we have two options. We can either kill the Ender Dragon again, which means summoning it again, or we can go hunting far and wide in the end for a Chaos Guards, and I will do that at some point in this series, but you need a, you need more of a set of Draconic Armor. I think you need Helm in particular. A full set won't hurt. So anyway, you, you gotta get the Dragon Hearts to charge the Draconium, so we've got a Dragon Pack. Of these items, the two sort of expensive ones are the... Oh, I'm getting some lag here. I'm getting a lot of lag here. The two expensive ones are the charged draconium blocks. The other item is the resurrection stone. The resurrection stone is the one that is a pain. Let me make a resurrection stone over here, and you will see what is involved. It involves... I'm pretty sure it has a block of Draconium, just like that, in the middle. 
then we're going to need four weavering cores. So that means four nether stars. Actually, a total of five nether stars since there's one in the draconium block as well. And then it needs mob souls. And the souls are the problem here because they involve a lot of farming. These are relatively rare drops. You can get more of them if you've got the Reaper enchant on your sword like I've got here. I got Reaper 4. Supposedly there are five levels. I have not been able to find the fifth level. Um, but I got the Reaper enchant by basically repeatedly enchanting swords with the experience that I got while I was farming these souls. Draconic and Weaver tools have a chance to drop it, drop souls automatically, but it's a very small chance. So expect it to take a while when, if, when you're farming those souls. That is the real bottleneck on respawning the dragon. So I'm just going to use these. Some of these souls I think might be useful at some point in the future. The lava slime and these are, it just says skeleton, but you'll notice that it's black. It's the um, wither skeleton. So I'm going to pull that out. So I've made another one there. And because the, because you have to do all that farming, it's it's a pretty slow process. Let me go ahead and put that there. I will use it at some point in the future. And take these other items with me to the end, and we'll set them up. And I'm still getting a lot of lag. I apologize for the lag. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but it doesn't seem to have been fixed by going to the end, so it's not rendering lag. Let me see what's going on with the lag and I'll get right back. I don't think I want to fight the dragon with lagging quite this severely. I'm getting single digit frame rates. Okay, I'm back. Things seem to be doing a little better right now. I ended up just restarting the game. I'm not really sure what was going on. Sometimes it gets to where I'm getting close on memory with Minecraft running. That doesn't appear to have been the case this time, so I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, one of the things that I have been having a little issues with is it's been getting progressively more lacky. And one of the things is that's going on with that is that I think some of the stuff in the base is getting just a little bit out of hand. And I'm going to have to spend some time fixing it up. So I want to repair most of the damage here caused by the explosion. All right. In this spot, we're going to build a structure that's involved in this ritual, which is I don't know, the ritual of Draconic Resurrection or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but we put this resurrection stone in the middle, and it is surrounded by obsidian and glowstone in this pattern. We then need to put eight pillars around the edge of it, and Two of the pillars are two blocks high, or four of the pillars are two blocks high, and the other four are one block high. And I am just going to arrange them similar to how it's shown in the tablet. I don't think that the tablet actually, um, I think it says they can be arranged however you like, as long as they're within a certain distance. But I believe it arranges them like this. Now on top of four of these pillars, we want to put diamond blocks. So we'll do that there, 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 and there. And it's got to be on the short ones. And the tall blocks get the charged draconium. And if we set this upright, and I'm not going to do it just yet, but if we set this upright, then all I have to do is right-click on the block in the middle, and it should start the, the ritual, and it's uh, got a really big light show. But... In summary, what's about to happen is the following. I'm going to click the middle. There's going to be lots of lightning and stuff going on. All of the pylons over here that are obsidian with bedrock on top are going to get their crystals back in place. The crystals are going to regrow during the storm. And all of these materials that I've put around in here, except for the obsidian, are going to be completely destroyed. So you're sacrificing all of this material to resurrect the dragon. When that happens, the, the dragon will respawn eventually. The light show is pretty long, and I'm going to back off a little bit so you can see it. Uh, 
All the pylons will light back up. The dragon will spawn. When he first spawns, he's going to have regeneration, so I'm not even going to bother to chase after the dragon until after I kill the, the crystals on top of the pillars. Might as well just do them first. In preparation for this, I am going to get my bow out, wherever it is. There we go. And the other thing I want is I want to go ahead and put on my ring of magnetization so that I don't lose any drops that happen to fall other than, I guess, just experience. Okay. So, I guess we're about ready to start. Let me eat something here. Okay. And we will click on it. And run away! Lots of lights. And the crystals just came back on the pylons over here. Just like that. We can see the energy sort of coalescing in the middle. Okay, there we go with a new dragon. Now supposedly these, this dragon gets tougher every time you do this up to a cap. This is like the fourth or maybe the fifth time that I've done this because it really takes some... Um, actually I've probably only done this three times. But... Let's see if we can get these pylons dead. Then I'll just turn on the dragon. See, there he is over there. So I think the first time I killed the Ender Dragon, I actually two-shotted him with this bow, so it's definitely tougher. The texture's a little different. Raining XP off into the void, mostly. Okay, now the other thing that happened that's worth mentioning here is that at the same spot where I first killed the Ender Dragon, it respawned a new dragon egg here. And um, I part of the reason for building out all this land over here, and I've been building quite a bit of landscape all through here, and it's all lit up so that I don't have that happening. But of course my torches got destroyed in the explosion over there. Um, let's hit this thing and hopefully I've built my land big enough so that it doesn't go sailing off into the void. There it went right there. So I would like to... Oh, let's see. Yeah. To rescue this I need to dig underneath it. And let's see, it's right there. Place a torch and break the block it's sitting on. There we go. All right. 
So fill in my work there and head home. Maybe a bit of slowness here as things start to render in. But that was one way to kill the dragon. And I'm going to put a couple of items away here that I don't need right now. I don't need all that draconium or an epic shader grab bag or five yellow hearts. Um, this other stuff I'll keep because I've been storing it all in this chest over here. So, so far what we've done is we've done the um, Draconic Evolution method of charging or awakening the blocks. And we've done the Draconic Evolution way of respawning the dragon, which is pretty um, nasty. One of the items that I meant to show earlier here was on the Draconium blocks. The ones that we needed were charged. And it takes 100 million RF to charge them. And the way, there are a number of ways of doing it. Anything that will charge Dracon or charge um, an item that holds RF will do it. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to get one of these big vibrant capacitor banks. This one holds enough to charge all four of these at 100 million apiece. Just pop them in there and they will begin charging up very quickly. And I'll sit here while one of them charges, but afterwards I'm going to go on um, and just leave the others. Okay, so one of them charged already. That's why you want to use something like that to charge them. There, There's a big uh, draconic evolution energy storage that can hold up to like 2.1 trillion RF, and I might build it at some point if I get enough spare nether stars just sitting around with no other purpose. But as it stands at the moment, I'm just using the capacitor bank there to hold RF. Okay, the other way to respawn the Ender Dragon is bees. I have here a Phantasmal Queen. I'm going to need an apiary. And I'm going to need a dragon egg that I recovered earlier. And that is all I'm going to need. And the Phantasmal Bee comes with an effect called Resurrection. Now the stats on this are improved, but the, the important part is that it has the, the effect called Resurrection. If you have that effect, you can transfer it to some other bee if you want, and then some other bee will be able to do this. What Resurrection does is it causes mobs to respawn from their drops. So it works very well as a mob spawner. I've been thinking about maybe setting up um, a skeleton spawner in the nether using it. Because all you really got to do is, is just have that bee going. It's, it's very simple. You don't require any power. It just um, does its thing and respawns from the drops. So all I would need is some grinder that drops the items. I can pick up the wither skeleton skulls using a, oh, um, a transfer node with the uh, world interaction upgrade in it and a filter just to get those items and then mob should respawn from the drops. I haven't tried it yet. It might be that it won't do wither skeletons, but I'm probably going to try that at some point because that's probably a pretty convenient way to um, set up a, a spawner. It might also have restrictions like players have to be nearby or something like that. Anyway, let's go back to the end and spawn the dragon again. This time the easy way. Now what happened before was when you do this, and this is why something was done that you may have noticed here, we've actually got two pools to return to the overworld, because every time you do this, it will spawn a new pool as well as a new dragon egg. So that may not be what you're expecting. All right. Now this will spawn very fast once I uh, put the queen in there. I am going to at least initially move my magnetization out so I don't pick up the egg before it can be activated. Let's just toss the egg down. It has to be a loose item like that. Okay, it can't be sitting still on its pedestal. It's got to actually be a floating entity item there. Okay, so I'm going to toss the, uh, the queen into the bee house. And pull it back off because there's a dragon. Now this time I didn't get the pylons back and he's an easy kill. 
because it's just the original dragon. There, I got the heart. And it dropped a new... Um, it created a new pool and another egg, which I'm not going to break right now because it probably will get lost if I do. And I do want to get it back. But I will just build up some more land on that and we'll be ready to go again. So there's four more blocks of charged draconium. And that time it was the easy way. Now, notice that the, the bee is still here, but the house is gone. Obviously when the dragon spawned, every block that it passes through that's not in stone or bedrock or the portal over there or obsidian, it destroys. So it destroyed my apiary. But it did leave the, the bee and I was able to go back and pick it up. And it's done that twice now. I don't know if it can destroy the bee or not. I suspect it doesn't destroy entities, but it may. I'll just find out. So that was today's adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found the information useful. I certainly had to do quite a bit of research to figure out the various um, Draconic Evolution stuff because this is my first time with this mod. And we'll be looking at some base improvements for eliminating some bottlenecks and hopefully improving performance a little bit. So if you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next episode.